Welcome to your Heavy Duty Engines, Vehicles, and GHG Products Certification Group tutorial. My name is Kathleen Mead, and I'm going to provide you with a quick overview of the invoicing and payment history and process. In 2018 and 2019, the legislature provided CARB with new authority to assess fees for certification and compliance activities for the non-on-road products such as lawnmowers, aftermarket parts, off-road equipment, and evaporative components. Also, the legislature lift the cap from the existing fee structure assessed on on-road cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Starting in 2019, CARB staff worked with the affected manufacturers to create a fee structure that was adopted by our board in April 2021. The new fee structure requires an upfront fee at the time of product application. There are 35 different categories organized in six different certification groups. This tutorial focuses on heavy-duty engine vehicles and greenhouse gas certification group. To read the regulations, please go to our webpage shown here. The regulation was approved by the Office of Administrative Law on January 18th of this year, and it will go into effect on April 1st. The applications received on April 1st and later will require the correct upfront fee prior to CARB's staff evaluating the product application. The fee payment process is a four-step process. Obtaining a fiscal account, creating and finalizing your invoice, making the payment, and submittal of payment documents with your application. On March 8th, I provided a workshop that walked through the details of Step 1, 3, and 4, seen on this slide. This focused tutorial will provide more details on your certification group requirements, such as creating the draft invoice and defining each category type and fee type for this group. For more information on the complete process, please review the March 8th workshop or go to our webpage shown on the slide. As previously stated, this tutorial focuses on how to create a draft invoice required for the invoicing process. The details of the step-by-step -step process are outlined in the March 8th workshop and a recording of that workshop is provided on our webpage. For a quick review of the overall invoicing process, there are three steps. First, the manufacturer, or you, go to our website, select the correct draft invoice for your focus group, and create a draft invoice. Second, you email the draft invoice to mscertfees at arb.ca.gov, ensuring that you follow the instructions listed on this slide. Lastly, CARB staff will create and then email back to you the final invoice. You use the invoice number and total payment for Step 3 and 4 of the invoicing and payment process. Again, please review the March 8th workshop or visit our webpage for detailed instructions. Now, I will hand the reins over to your focus group specialist to provide you with the information you need to fill out your draft invoice. Hello, I'm Ryan from Compression Ignition Heavy Duty Certification, and I will be discussing this focus training to demonstrate how to create a draft invoice for heavy duty engines and vehicles. To begin, go to Mobile Source Certification and Compliance Fee Regulation Meetings and Workshops page on the CARB website. Then navigate to the Mobile Source Fee Implementation Resources section and select the On-Road Draft Invoice form. This is what the On-Road Draft Invoice looks like. There are three areas for critical information. The company information, the application information, and the final signature and total due to CARB. I will be reviewing these sections over the next few slides. This is the top section of the form where you will be inputting company information such as company name, address, and contact information. The fields for invoice number and invoice date, which are outlined in red, are reserved for CARB's use only. 
so please leave them blank. The last field of company information asks for your Fiscal account number, which is supplied to you by CARB. Fiscal is a state accounting system. The parent company, address, and payment contact may be different in the Fiscal account from the application contact. Please review the March 8th workshop information or website to obtain more information on getting your Fiscal account. This is what the middle section of the form looks like. There are columns for the product description, calendar year, unique application identifier, category type, fee type, and amount. Each row represents one application. We will cover the process of filling out the information in these columns in the next few slides. Multiple applications within the on-road certification group can be listed in one invoice. These are examples of the product description and model year for a CAHD application. The second column on the form is the product description or family name. The image here illustrates an example of what a product description may look like. For engines and vehicles, use the file name in the document management system, DMS, that is associated with the application that you will be submitting to CARB. Refer to the DMS file naming convention for additional details. Exempt engine and fuel fire heater applications are not submitted to DMS. Instead, use exempt engine application or fuel fired application. The third column on the form is the model or calendar year. Please provide the model or calendar year for which the application is submitted, such as model year 2023 or calendar year 2022. These are examples of the unique application identifiers for a CIHD application. The fourth column on the form is the unique application identifier. Each manufacturer, whether new or in position, of an existing EO will need to generate a unique application identifier. For heavy duty engines and vehicles, use the engine or evaporative family name. Refer to the EPA naming convention for engine or evaporative family names. For on-road heavy duty exempt engines, use the manufacturer's engine serial number. For fuel fired heaters, use the manufacturer's model name. In this presentation, we will discuss fee category B. Please refer to the on-road light duty vehicle and motorcycle presentation for products that fall under the following categories. The category type drop-down menu allows you to select the suitable category type for your application. This is the drop-down for category B. Category B contains heavy duty engine, evaporative systems, and fuel fired heaters. The application submission must match the category and fee type. The definitions of each category and fee type can be found in Title 13 section 2901 and 2903. There are five category types within the compression ignition heavy duty certification group. The fee categories for this group are heavy and medium duty compression ignition engine families, heavy and medium duty auto cycle engine families, heavy duty vehicle evaporative and incomplete medium duty evaporative families, on-road heavy duty exempt engines, and fuel fired heaters. The heavy and medium duty compression ignition engine family category type is subject to Title 13, Division 3, Chapter 1, Article 2. The three applicable fee types are base fee, carryover fee, and partial carryover fee. Make sure to select the correct fee type that suits your application. Otherwise, there will be delays in processing. The amount cell of the invoice form autofills once you have made your selection. I will cover each fee type in the following slides. If your application is for heavy or medium duty compression ignition engines, then on the invoice form under the category type drop down menu, select HDCI engine and MDCI engine family as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type drop down menu to see which fee types are applicable. We will cover each of these in the next few slides. Delays in processing your application will occur if your application does not qualify for the fee type. Base fee type is the standard for most applications. The base fee type is for applications that do not qualify for a reduced cost certification fee, including carryover, partial carryover, zero emission, low California production manufacturer, or low California production for sale engine family. Delays in processing your application will occur if your application does not qualify for the fee type. Base fee type is standard for most applications. Carryover applications use the carryover fee type. A carryover application is identical to the previous model year's application that resulted in the issuance of a certification, except for one or more of the following. Model year, engine, vehicle, or evaporative family name, manufacturer contact information, projected sales data, 
or portions of an application that pertain to compliance with onboard diagnostics requirements set forth in sections 1968.2 and 1971.1. Partial carryover applications use the partial carryover fee type. Partial carryover applications are similar to carryover applications, except that there are additional categories of information that may change from the previous model year's application. A partial carryover application is identical to the previous model year's application that resulted in the issuance of a certification, except for one or more of the following. Model year, engine, vehicle, or evaporative family name, manufacturer contact information, projected sales data, or portions of an application that pertain to compliance with onboard diagnostics requirements set forth in sections 1968.2 and 1971.1. And in addition, one or more of the following. Model names, part numbers, including new parts if they are durable to full useful life and do not impact the certification emission levels or equipment types. Carryover or partial carryover certification applications must meet prescribed qualification criteria and are submitted using the appropriate certification procedures. Delays in processing your application will occur if your application does not qualify for the fee type. Base type fee is standard for most applications. Refer to the mail out below for further details on the streamlined certification process. The heavy and medium duty auto cycle engine family category type is subject to Title 13, Division 3, Chapter 1, Article 2. The three applicable fee types are base fee, carryover fee, and partial carryover fee. Make sure to select the correct fee type that suits your application. Otherwise, there will be delays in processing. The amount cell of the invoice form auto-fills once you've made your selection. If your application is for heavy or medium duty auto cycle engines, then on the invoice form under the category type dropdown menu, select HDO engine family and MDO engine family as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type dropdown menu to see which fee types are applicable. Delays in processing your application will occur if your application does not qualify for the fee type. Base fee type is standard for most applications. The heavy duty vehicle evaporative and incomplete medium duty evaporative family category type is subject to Title 13, Division 3, Chapter 1, Article 2. The three applicable fee types are base fee, carryover fee, and partial carryover fee. Make sure to select the correct fee type that suits your application. Otherwise, there will be delays in processing. The amount cell of the invoice form autofills once you've made your selection. If your application is a heavy duty vehicle evaporative or incomplete medium duty evaporative emissions family, then on the invoice form, under the category type drops on menu, select heavy duty vehicle evaporative emissions family and incomplete MDV evaporative emissions family, as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type drop-down menu to see which fee types are applicable. Delays in processing your application will occur if your application does not qualify for the fee type. Base fee type is standard for most applications. The on-road heavy duty exempt engines category type is subject to Title 13, Division 3, Chapter 1, Article 2. The one applicable fee type is the base fee. The amount cell of the invoice form autofills once you've made your selection. If your application is an on-road heavy duty exempt engine, then on the invoice form under the category type drops on menu, select on-road heavy duty exempt engines as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type drops on menu to select the applicable fee type. Base fee type is standard for all applications. The fuel fired heaters category type is subject to Title 13, Division 3, Chapter 1, Article 2, and Title 13, Division 3, Chapter 10, Article 1. The one applicable fee type is the base fee. The amount cell of the invoice form autofills once you've made your selection. If your application is a fuel fired heater, then on the invoice form under the category type drop down menu, select fuel fired heater as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type drop down menu to select the applicable fee type. Base fee type is standard for all applications. Hello, my name is Mohammed from Heavy Duty Greenhouse Gas Certification, and I will be discussing this focus training to demonstrate how to create a draft invoice for heavy duty greenhouse gas applications. 
Shown here is an example of the product description and model or calendar year information filled out for vehicle family, trailer family, aerodynamic technologies, and zero emission powertrain family. Examples for each category type will be provided later in this presentation. For all category types except aerodynamic technologies, use the file name in the document management system, DMS, that is associated with the application that you will be submitting to CAR. For aerodynamic technologies, use a brief description of the product. On the next column, for vehicle family and trailer family, please select model year. And for aerodynamic technologies and zero emission powertrain, please select calendar year. This is an example of the unique application identifier filled out for vehicle family, trailer family, aerodynamic technologies, and zero emission powertrain family. Examples for each category type will be provided later in this presentation. For heavy duty greenhouse gas vehicles and trailers, please use the family name per EPA naming convention guidance. The URL is provided here for more details. For zero emission powertrain, please use the family name per naming convention mail out number ECC 2020-04. The URL is provided here for more details. For aerodynamic technologies, please use the manufacturer's model name. As discussed previously, there are three sections under the on-road category types. Next, I will discuss the C category for GHG category types. For section A, please refer to the on-road light duty vehicle and motorcycle tutorial. And section P starts on previous slide 13. The category type drop-down menu allows you to select the suitable category type for your application. We will get a better view of these categories on the next slide. Heavy-duty greenhouse gas dust have four categories as listed here. Vehicle family, trailer family, aerodynamic technologies, and zero emission powertrain family. Each of these categories and associated fee types will be discussed over the next few slides. The GHG vehicle family category type is subject to the Title 17 requirements referenced on this slide. There are five applicable fee types listed here. I will cover each fee type in the following slides. If your application is for a heavy duty greenhouse gas vehicle family, then on the invoice form under the category type drop down menu, select HD GHD vehicle family as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type drop down menu to see which fee type are applicable to your application. Please make sure to select the correct fee type that suits your application. Otherwise, there will be delays in processing. The amount sale of the invoice form auto fills once you've made your selections. For definition of the base and carry over fee types, please refer to slide 18 and 19. I will cover the other fee types in the next few slides. If a manufacturer produces not more than 301 heavy-duty greenhouse gas vehicles annually for sale in California, the manufacturer can select the low California production fee type, which is a discounted fee compared to the base. Heavy-duty GHG section does have its own definition for partial carryover. A GHG partial carryover application is identical to the previous model year's application except for model year, first letter of the vehicle family name, manufacturer contact information, projected sales, to be continued on the next slide. New model vehicles, if the certification emission levels and worst case are not changed, part numbers, if they are shown to be durable to full useful life and do not impact the certification emission levels, and equipment type. Fuel cell or battery electric vehicle families with a GVWR greater than 14,000 pounds are eligible to receive a discount compared to the base fee under zero emission fee type. Trader family certification to California phase two GHG is on a voluntary basis. However, if a manufacturer chooses to certify the trader family, the cert fee is required. There are three fee types applicable to trailer family category listed here. I will explain how to fill the invoice form for this fee category in the next slide. 
If your application is for a trader family, then on the invoice form under the category type drop down menu, please select trailer family as illustrated here. After selecting the category type, you can then open the fee type drop down menu to see which fee types are applicable to your application. The amount cell of the invoice form auto fills once you have made your selection. The definition of all fee types was covered on slides 18, 19, 39, and 40. Aerodynamic Technologist category type is subject to Title 40 requirements referenced on this slide. The fee is based on calendar year and the EO is applicable for three model years. There is only one applicable fee type listed here. I will discuss how to fill the invoice form for this category type in the next slide. If your application is for an aerodynamic technologies, then on the invoice form under the category type drop down menu, select aerodynamic technologies as illustrated here. After selecting the category type under the fee type drop down menu, you can select base as a fee type. The amount cell of the invoice form auto fills once you have made your selection. Zero emission powertrain category type is subject to California heavy duty zero emission powertrain regulations. The fee is based on the calendar year. There is only one applicable fee for this category type, which is base. I will explain how to fill the invoice form for this category type in the next slide. If your application is for a zero emission powertrain family, then on the invoice form under the category type drop down menu, select zero emission powertrain family as illustrated here. After selecting the category type under the fee type drop down menu, you can select base as a fee type. The definition of base fee type was covered on slide 18. The amount cell of the invoice form auto fills once you have made your selection. This slide concludes heavy duty GHD tutorial. After filling out all the information on the invoice form, except for the invoice number and invoice dates, save this draft invoice for your records. Email this draft invoice to the email on the slide. Remember to put in the title of the invoice, MSF new invoice request, parenthesis on, as instructed in the March 8th workshop. If your draft invoice is deemed complete by CARB staff, an invoice number and date will be incorporated into the form, turning your draft invoice into a final invoice. CARB staff will then email this form invoice back to you. Please wait five business days after receiving your final invoice before submitting a payment to allow for processing of your invoice information. If you pay too soon, the payment may get lost from your invoice and cause delays in processing your application. Make your payment on the website referenced here. After making your payment, email your assigned certification staff with the invoice number on the final invoice payment. This alerts staff to look for the payment confirmation in our internal documents. For more details on the payment process, please review the March 8th workshop presentation. The fee structure is set up as an upfront fee due at the time of application submittal. The correct fee amount must be received by CARB prior to the review or processing of the application. Corrected payment will be due before new applications will be processed if limits for volume discounts in previous applications were exceeded. This is a reminder so you do not have to address underpayment issues or have delays in the processing of your application. Before submitting applications, please attach the final invoice to the first page of the application and submit it to DMS. If an application does not match the fee type selected, the application processing will cease until the fee invoice or underpayment is corrected. For end of year production reporting, future application processing will cease until the remainder of the fee is paid. For any questions, contact your certification staff or go to our website. Additionally, only use this email for invoice submittals. The email subject line must have the category type on as shown in the slide.